marketers out there and those uh, creating wonderful produce that we like to enjoy at our local farmers market. But maybe it could be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, Sherry Clark from Fork of the Road is just going to kind of give you a little bit of an orientation of what you can expect when you're heading to the farmers market. One of my favorite activities every week is going to the farmer's market. Today I'm at one of the biggest farmer's markets in the country and I've invited my friend Brooke to come along. Brooke, welcome. Thank you and I appreciate the invitation because you know what? The farmer's market really scares me. Oh. I actually kind of avoid it because I look in all directions and all I see is tents and I really don't know what to do. But I noticed you had us meet at the information booth, so there's gotta be some reason we're here. There's a good reason to meet at the information booth. Just like it says, lots of info. They're gonna be able to tell you who's here this week, and not all the vendors are here every week. They'll also be able to tell you who's certified organic, where's the ATM, where are the restrooms, wealth of information. So. You told me that because we've met early that I should probably wear a jacket. You were darn right. Yes. Um, what else do you do to prepare to make the most out of your time at the farmer's market? Good question. Well, I bring certain things. You'll notice I have my sunglasses on my head, and even though I don't need them right now, I might at some point if we're walking into the sun. In my purse, I've got small bills because I don't know that the vendors are going to be able to change my larger bills. Um, I, some of them take credit cards, but I don't usually do that. I don't want to wait around. I want to keep shopping. I also have brought a card. Yes. And the, the cart's really handy, especially if I buy anything big or heavy. One of the things that I always worry about is that I'm going to buy something at this booth and then like five booths later I'm going <laughs> to find something so much better. Well, don't worry about that. Here's the thing. You may, it may just happen. And my advice to you is if you find something that you like better, buy that one too. Get them home and compare. Because first of all, don't judge a book by its cover or a tomato by its skin. One, one that looks really good might not taste as, as good as the other one. So be adventuresome. And remember, it's not a big investment. You spend a few dollars on some tomatoes and you didn't need them. Oh, well. Well, I'm excited. So let's get started. <laughs> Me too. Let's go. Okay. Alrighty, you're gonna like this. I'd like to introduce you to Jill and Sean. Hi Jill, hi Sean. Good morning. Good morning. We're gonna buy some honey today, and I thought I would defer to you since you're the expert. Would you give us a quick honey primer? Sure. These are this is a later summer honey. It's to go darker. Had you been here oh, okay. in the spring, we had lighter honey. Yes, or I early remember. Summer. Yeah. So it'd be lighter in color. It's because that's what the 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 nectar in the floral sources is. It's lighter in the spring darker as, as the year cool. progresses. So you get into the fall, you have goldenrod and, and aster and really darker pollen. Do they taste different? Yes, they'll have oh. a richer, it's like, a, it's like beer. A very light colored beer, it has a light, easy flavor and the, the darker they get, the more complex and rich they get. Oh, Sean, what about this? Comb honey? Yeah. Is, that's truly just from the hive. So instead of, I, to get the, this honey, we have to scrape off the top of the wax and we put it in a, in a, in a spinner and it spins and throws it out. But this is just all the bees have made that. They've made the wax, they put the honey in, they sealed it. It's perfect honey. It's as raw as you can get. Oh. Um, so we just cut it out of a frame, put it in a box. You, I eat it like a snack. Just take a spoonful of it, chew it. I Sometimes I uh, will I eat the wax as well. Sometimes I dispose of the wax. But So the wax put, is edible? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, cool. Absolutely. I mean, there's no nutritional value to it. Sure, but it's, just, but it's not going to hurt you. Oh, no, no, it's, it's great. And, and it's and, raw, so, and you know that appeals to me. Yeah, now it's really great on hot bread, hot biscuits, mm. because you, with the whole wax it and would all, melt. you just ooze it all together, you have nice texture. Oh, uh, neat. And it really, it's really wonderful. Well, it sounds like you know what you're doing, and you uh, love it. I've been doing it for about eight years, and I will never say I know what I'm doing. <laughs> these are a wonderful, fascinating creature. They've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years and they've come up with the perfect food you know honey doesn't go bad right it won't, we will not spoil it will crystallize <laughs> if it gets cold it'll it'll become crystallized and, and solid right. and that you can still use it spread it and use it well but if you want to take it back for crystallization just put it in a very warm windowsill on a radiator or even in a pot of hot water 
uh, and then don't it'll get nuke it, and then it'll go back to its liquid golden form. But yeah, See, don't nuke it because that's going to that's going to kill too many uh, of the enzymes. wonderful good stuff in there, and probably alter the flavor. And and this honey is raw. Yes. So what makes it raw? Raw means it hasn't been heated or or treated. So we haven't flavored it. It's just what you get. It is what it's it is. Unpasteurized. It's, 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 it's not pasteurized, and it for heat, usually honey is heated not necessarily for pasteurization, but for ease of of working. Mm. The more thin it is, it's like an oil. You know, the motor oil, the thinner it is, the easier it is to work with it and then fill bottles and to do things. The, when it's, when you don't heat it, then it's thicker. You have to be more patient and fill the bottle slower and just everything is a little bit slower. And we're not patient. Right. <laughs> and it's always good to do it on a really warm day because obviously you can think, you put it in the spinner, it's going to get thick. So you right. want to do it when it's the one temperature, so no honey itself and the comb is, is warm. Wow. I'm sold. This is How amazing. You? Yeah, I had no idea. Thank, no. thank you so much. Why don't we go up here to Crooked Creek? I really like their their produce, and uh, they'll be very helpful to us. I also really like the melons here, and I buy those typically first because I put them on the bottom of the cart. Ah, uh, so if there's tomatoes in there, I don't squish them. Got it. Yeah. So you have some you have some method to your madness. I absolutely do. Okay. You got, um, Crooked Creek also has some decent uh, cucumbers today, and I did notice when we walked by they have some jalapeno peppers, and I'm going to make some poppers this weekend. So how do I know what kind of jalapeno peppers to buy? Well, a lot of times I ask them, but I do have my own personal preferences. I like red peppers peppers as opposed to green. They taste a little bit better, they're sweeter, they're easier to digest. But some of what I've learned, I've learned from the vendors themselves. Hi, Hi good morning, how Connie. How are you? Glad to have you down here. This is my friend Brooke and she Hi, asked me Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> she's asked me if you'd help us pick out a melon. Oh that'll be great. That'd be great. Are you looking for a musk melon or watermelon? I am thinking of musk melon a musk today. Melon? Okay. So I always like to give them a little smell down here where their little belly button is. Mm -hmm. And that one smells really sweet. You see what you think. How are you? Oh. <laughs> oh. This is a keeper. Yep. 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 Yeah. See what I'm saying? It sh it's really helpful and, and you can get all kinds of wonderful tips and pointers. A lot of times people think that the only good produce comes from the big supermarkets. And the local farmers have great produce. And it's fresh. It hasn't sat there, picked green, and then taken to the store and ripen. It's also less expensive. It is. The price on this melon is two dollars. At the store, it's quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Well, Connie, it was great to meet you, and I'll be back to visit well, you. We have farmers markets that are going on today. Don't forget yep. Valley Junction is the big one tonight. Yeah, well, the community is really starting to pop up with their local farmers market. Of course, the big one, the downtown one that they were visiting. Always great to get those little tidbits. Sometimes mm -hmm. you forget. You're just excited to go and it's like, oh, I wish I would have this. The information asses. booth at the beginning is the one I think is uh, probably the biggest takeaway because you don't know who's there at farmers right. market. It's so big. Des Moines is so big when downtown Des Moines. Mixing it up. And they're moving them around. Yeah, and find out where they are and Absolutely. who's here and who's not. Perfect. Great advice from Sherry Clark. Of course, you can always see her here on Thursdays and you can check her out at Fork in the Road uh, da uh, Fork in the Road dash something or else.com. Fork dash road. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to com. say. <laughs> that works. Fork dash road. Com. When we come back, 